So you have an Epson scanner. You watched my two previous videos on the basics of scanning slides, negatives, or prints. So now you want to adjust some of the more advanced settings. Well, let's get into that. Now, for most people, you don't need to get into the advanced settings to do just basic scanning, but it can make it a lot easier. So we're going to drop into it and we're going to show what some of the settings are. So down here, right beside the scan button, we have a button that says save or file save settings. You click on that and this is where you can send your pictures to once scanned. Now, you can send them to my document folder, pictures folder, or other folder. If you have a lot of pictures in my documents or a lot of pictures in, my, in your picture folder, I recommend sending it to a folder that is empty so you're not mixing them up with all your other pictures. In this case, on this computer, the only thing that's in the pictures folder is scan pictures because I save everything to external hard drives. So this folder is always empty. So this is where I send my pictures to. Under the file name, I just leave it as the prefix that comes with the Epson scanning software, which is IMG. And the number, whatever the current number is, that's what it's set to. I don't care how it numbers them or what the prefix is because I always rename my full files anyways when I'm working on them. But you could change this to wildlife pictures or nature pictures and start at number one and keep scanning and it'll automatically put them in the right number and everything And if that's what you want to do. Now, image format. If you've watched any of my videos, you're going to know that I'm a JPEG person. There's a lot of formats out there and there's nothing wrong with them, but JPEG is where I work. But here there's a couple formats that I just don't, I, you definitely don't want to use and I just don't understand. The first one is bitmap. You do not want to use bitmap for a photo. You just don't. The quality sucks. It's horrible. Likewise, multi-tiff format. I honestly do not save a bunch of files in the same file name because I, I just don't find it's useful for anything. I just don't. This you can scan multiple uh, photos and it'll save it under the same file name. So you could call this wildlife and have 50 pictures in the TIFF file. Again, I just don't see why. It just It's not useful. I'm going to jump past PDF. I'm going to go to print image matching JPEG and TIFF. I've tried both of these and I do not find that anything in here is worthwhile to use. It just, it doesn't work. The format for me just has nothing to do with the, the scanner. So I just don't use them. But let's get back here into PDF. PDF is a printable document format. I don't like it for photos. I just don't because it just, it's too big. It's not big enough. It just doesn't work right. It's just not for photos. If you're going to do anything, if you're not a JPEG person, the other thing down here that I would use is TIFF. But I strongly suggest JPEG. So let's click on JPEG and then let's go into our options. Now under options, this is where JPEG gets a bad rap. People crank the, low, the quality to the lowest setting and then they scan it and they say, well, look at how bad the quality is. Well, yeah, no kidding. You have it on the lowest setting. If you're going to use JPEG, take it from wherever it's currently set up when you installed it to the highest setting. Encoding, you want to leave this at standard. Progressive, what it does is it scans the picture or it loads the picture at different scans. So it loads a little bit faster, but it doesn't load the high quality to begin with. Keep it at standard. And embed ICC profile. And we're going to be t talking about how to make an ICC profile in a few seconds here or a few minutes. So you want to keep that on. Then you want to click on OK. Now the settings down here. Overwrite any files with the same file name. You should never have this on. And I don't know why they would have it on here. Because if there's any files that are already named this, it's going to overwrite them. So don't have this on. Show this dialog box before the next scan or open image folder after scanning. These to me are a waste of time. And if you scan anything like I do where you scan 50, 100, 1,000 scans in a day, these are useless and they're just time wasters. So the, that one's gone. And this show add page dialog after scanning. If you're scanning documents, fine, I understand it. But other than that, you should not be clicking on this. Now, when you click on OK, it will save your file settings. So now this setting, whatever we've set up here is now saved and it is ready to go. You won't have to change that any, anymore. It's done. It's saved. It's, it's correct. So we're, we're done with it. 
Now, let's go into configuration because there's some stuff here that you may want to set up. So, preview. Now, every time we click one of these boxes, we're changing the speed with how this scanner scans and it can slow it down. So a lot of this stuff may have a reason or a purpose, but I find that it makes a scan too slow and it just the purpose just isn't there for me. So some of this stuff is personal, I admit it, but some of this stuff is, well, I gotta say useless. So preview image rotation. I don't care. I don't want to see the image rotation until I change it. So I leave this off and I go from there. Units. I'm an inch person. I do not like metric, even though I'm in Canada, because everything I work on is four by six, five by seven, eight by 10. So I keep it in inches. Now, quality preview. I don't need a quality preview. I just want to see a quick preview. I just want to do a quick adjustment. I don't need to see the highest quality because again, I'm scanning hundreds, sometimes thousands of files a day. So as long as I see how it generally looks, I'm happy. Okay, densitometer sampling area and eyedropper sampling area. These are two settings that I'll show you in a little bit, but what they're doing is they're telling you how much it's sampling when you use either the densitometer setting or the eyedrop setting. One on one, really tiny. Three on three, a little bit larger, and then there's five on five, which is a little bit larger. I leave them both set to three and three. If I'm really being particular, I will change it to one by one. I've never found five by five worthwhile for what I do, but those are my settings there. Auto photo orientation. No, I will set my photos myself. I will orient them myself. Thank you very much. And thumbnail cropping area. I leave it at the smallest. Pretty straightforward. Done. This is the first screen. Color. Now we talked about earlier about embedding the IC profile into your files. This is where you set it up. And this just gives the files that you're scanning a little bit more color should we say, um, regularity, a little bit more color balance to it. So first of all, color control. You can set up a color control up here. I don't use this. And I honestly, I hate this continuous auto exposure because it changes stuff too often. And I, I, I just don't like that. So I'm always using ICM. This is an Epson standard, Epson scanner. That's the only selection you have. The target that I use is Adobe RGB because Adobe has a bigger color space than what sRGB is. <laughs> I'm an Adobe person, so that's where I'm using, and that's the setting I use. And display the preview using the monitor compensation, so the previews are up here, and the previews that I look at in other uh, viewing programs are embedded into it. And that's the setting I use for my color. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. File size. This only applies if your scanner scans medium format negatives. And medium format negatives are not all the same size. Some are 645, some are 6667, 6869. If you have it set for 645 and you put in a 6x9 negative, it will have trouble recognizing the uh, size of the negative and it may cut it up or it may end scan one and a half or whatever. So if you're scanning medium format, this is where you set up the size of medium format negative that you are scanning. And the most I do here is six four by six by four point five, which is six four five. So that's why I have it set up there. Then other again, a lot of this stuff. Correct document skew. I don't need it. Show texture. I don't need to see the texture. Save settings. I want it kept in the C drive, so that's where I have it saved. And then restore all settings to the default value. If you ever find that you have trouble with your scanner, it's not doing things correctly. Hit the reset all. Once you've gone in, once you've changed this stuff, click on OK, and it will save it for you. So that's your setup of your Epson scanner. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Now let's get into some of your settings that I didn't cover in the last videos, or at least I didn't cover very well. So let's drop down here, and we're going to talk about what the densitometer is. Remember earlier I told you that you could set it to 1 by 1, 3 by 3, or 5 by 5. This is where when you move your mouse over, it is sampling an area. And it is sampling right now a 3 by 3 pixel area. And I can move it over, I can move it to the coyote here, and it's sampling a 3 by 3 pixel area and telling me what I've got there. Now if I adjust it, the before and the after is going to be more dramatic. But this is what it sees. This is what the scanner has corrected. So the before 
is what the before when it scanned it. And then it's done a little bit of adjusting. So that's what I get the little bit of adjusting to after. And that's what this is. So you can go in and read the different colors. Many people don't use it. It really doesn't have much of a purpose for most people, but it is a function feature that is there. So that's your densitometer. Now let's get into these buttons across here. Now we have a color wheel and 99% of the scanning that I do on this scanner, the color wheel is grayed out. It's one of these Epson things that use a color wheel and then they gray it out in 99% of the situations. So you can't use that in most of the situations that you're working with. This is an auto exposure. You can click on auto exposure and it will automatically adjust the picture where it sees fit. Sometimes it's really good. Sometimes it is horrible. Unfortunately, if it messes it up, it's harder to fix it afterwards. So in a lot of the cases, I leave this off and I do the adjustments myself. Next one over is histogram adjustment. Now you see we have histogram adjustment, we have tone correction, and we have image adjustment. When I click on one of these, that also brings them up here along the top bar. So it tells me right now I'm in histogram adjustment. I can click over here. I can go to tone correction. I can go over here to slider correction. So these become active in this window up at the very top here. So what are they? Well, let's start with the very first one where we're at currently, which is the histogram adjustment. You see it's grayed out there. So that means that it's active. And this is what it's seeing in the image that you just scan. And this is where you can adjust it. This is adjusting your white. This is adjusting your gray. This is adjusting your black. Now, if you have an area of the picture that you know is gray, you can click on the gray sampler and you can go in and you can click on something and say, this is gray and it will make it gray. Now in this image, we don't have anything that's really gray, but let's click on here and see what it will do. We click on gray and it ruined it. If that happens, all is not lost. All you have to do is hit the reset and it will reset it back to where it was originally. If there was something in here that was perfectly white, we could click on something white. We can then go in here and we can click on what we think is white. And again, we have nothing that's white here, but let's pretend this is white here. We click on it and it would adjust it from there. Again, didn't do a very good job, so we just hit reset. So this is your black, this is your gray, this is your white. You can adjust the numbers or you can adjust by slider. And away you go from there. Output here, this is how much black you have in the image. So you can remove black from the image. This is how much white you have in the image. So you can add white or you can take white out. So if this was overly white, you can take some of the white out. If this was overly black, you could take some of the black out. This is your basic histogram. You have a tonal curve down here that you can adjust. You have a gray balance intensity down here that you can go and adjust. But honestly, the, the, this, this is probably the one that people use the least. You can also go into each individual channel. So you can go in and adjust your red channel, your green channel, and your blue channel. And you can go in and you can make it bluer or you can make it less blue. Honestly, like I said before, this is the probably the least one that people use is the uh, using the histogram. The second most least one, if that's even a word, is the tonal curve. And I hear people all the time saying, oh, I use my tonal curve so I can adjust my full file because I get a much better image quality and I get, I, and yeah, really you do. So when you're doing the tonal curve, and I'm just going to exit over here and bring it up as the only one here. When you do in a tonal curve, you can adjust everything just like we did before, but it's more confusing to most people as to what the heck it's doing. You can adjust just the, all the colors or individual colors. Again, most people, this, this, this is just useless to them. So what do most people use? What's the best for most people? Well, it's your basic sliders and it works the best for most people, people. There, how's that for wording? If you want it brighter, you can use this slider. It's pretty simple. If you want it contrasty -er or less contrasty, -er, there's this slider. If you want it more saturated, 
If you want to change the color, you can make it more cyan by going this way. Come on, get to the cyan. You can make it more blue by going this way. And if you've done like I just did and you totally screw it up, you can hit the reset button. Now, a little tip here. The worst thing you can do before scanning the image is to adjust it too much. Because if you go like this and you adjust this image so that it's crazy wacko, and then you scan it, it's harder to fix the image afterwards. So what I tell people is to do the least amount of adjusting that you can possibly do to get it close to what you think it should look like before you scan it. Don't go overboard. So now let's say we did do something really bizarre. Let's say that you went in here and you adjusted this and then we've closed this and then we went in here and we adjusted this and we closed that. And now we got a whole bunch of stuff and we screwed up here really bad. That's what the reset button's for. Hit reset and it takes you back to where you were. So I hope that explained a bunch of stuff. I hope that helped you with some of the more advanced settings. The best advice I can give anybody is this. Don't go overboard when you're using any of the settings on your scanner. Scan it as close to neutral as possible. Don't go too sharp. Don't go too dark. Don't go too light. And then once it's scanned, get a good photo editing program, whatever that is, whether it be Photoshop, Elements, whether it be GIMP, whether it be whatever, and adjust your pictures afterwards after you've scanned them. And that's where I find that you get the best quality scans is by doing that. Now, in closing, can you get other scanner software and use other scanner software with your Epson scanner? Yes, you can. And there's some amazing scanner software out there. The issue that I find is this. First of all, sometimes it doesn't work as seamlessly as they want, as they want you to believe. And second, some of it is just way too advanced to start to use. So I always tell people this, be very careful as to what you're doing, what you're buying, and make sure that it is actually an improvement before you go and get it. Because honestly, the Epson scanner software will do 99% of the stuff that you want it to do. So until next time, have a great day. We'll talk to you soon. Scan some of your images, make some prints, and enjoy them. Have a great day. Bye-bye now.